Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Adam Schaefer. Can't wait to bring this one to you guys. We are laying out the first five days of our MAPS anabolic program for absolutely free. So make sure you guys are tuning in, share this with a friend so they can go through this journey. If you've been looking at some of our programs, you're not sure which one's right for you, we're gonna take you guys through the first five days of all these programs and we're starting off with MAPS anabolic. So after this, Sal and I are going to show you some movements with Paul. He's gonna demonstrate them. We're gonna break down all the biomechanics and then at the end of the video, make sure you guys stay in all the way to the end because then Sal is gonna explain why we program these exercises. These exercises are very specific to the program. There is a reason why we pick this rep range. There's a reason why we order the exercises in this order. There's a reason why we do a full body routine. So make sure you guys stay all the way into the end of the video when Sal brings that all together for you. All right, Adam, this first exercise in this workout is the box squat an often overlooked movement for building the lower body. That's right, so Paul's gonna get the barbell, set it back up on his traps. So you wanna squeeze the shoulder blades back so it sits on top of your traps. You wanna step back and stand in front of a sturdy box. Now the form with this exercise is different than a traditional barbell. You wanna slowly sit down, pause, and then come right back up. It's important you sit, stay tight with your core, and then come right back That's up. That's right. Most common mistake I see, Sal, is when people sit down, they tend to relax the stomach and then they're round at the lower back. So notice he's keeping really good posture, neutral spine, abs are tight, and he's breaking at the knees and hips at the same time. Now, the tempo that you see in this video is a tempo you want to copy. Also, don't just fl flop down onto the box. You want to control the descent. Now, the reason why you're doing these first in this workout is this is priming your hips for the next exercise, which is the king of all muscle builders. The barbell squat. All right, Adam, now we're moving into what a lot of people call the king of all exercises, the barbell squat. Yeah, so he should, his hips should be nice and primed now after doing those box squats, and we're now moving on to a full barbell squat. So still notice just like the same rules, we want to rest that bar up on his traps, his shoulders retracted, he breaks at the hips and knees at the same time, and notice the nice good control as he decelerates into the squat. Now you want to make sure your, your knees don't collapse, in other words, they don't cave in with each other. Your feet can be pointing straight or slightly out, you want to keep your core really, really tight, and you want to sit back with the squat. A lot of this movement is on the hips, and not a lot of it is on, or not at least most of it is in on the knees, which happens with a lot of people when they have poor form. Right. If you notice yourself shifting your weight onto your toes, this is very this is very common and that you lack the ankle mobility, refer back to some of our videos where we address ankle mobility. Now we put this exercise as the first muscle builder because it is a major gross motor movement. It is working the legs, but it is involving a lot of the upper body as well. So you want to do this at the beginning when you're fresh and when you're strong and to really reap the benefits of this amazing muscle building exercise. What's next, Sal? Moving up to the next exercise, which will be the barbell bench press. All right, Sal, we are now on to the barbell bench press, probably the king of all upper body exercises. It's definitely up there. It is a foundational movement. Now, you want to be on a bench, obviously, to do the bench press. You want your feet flat on the floor. Grab the bar outside your shoulders. Have a nice natural arch in the back. Unrack the bar. Keeping the shoulders back, bring the bar down to your chest with good control and press it straight up. Now, you'll notice the elbows aren't super flared out, nor are they super tucked in. You're kind of in the middle. You don't want to be extreme in either direction. Well, this is what protects the shoulders when we do a bench press. You see in the bodybuilding community, a lot of guys flare their elbows so they can feel it in their chest more, but that also puts your shoulders in a compromising position. So much safer to press the barbell just like Paul is right now and maintain that natural arch in that low back. Now, the hips do stay on the bench. So when we say arch, what we don't mean is you push your butt off the bench. What we mean is that natural low back arch. So basically the points of contact are the upper back and the hips. And of course his head is on the bench as well. Now mimic the tempo that you see in this video. Nice and controlled, nice and strong. It was the exercise following the squats because it is an important movement. What's next, Sal? Moving up next is the weighted pull-ups. All right, so now we're moving over to the pull-up. Uh, the pull-up is a fantastic strength builder for the upper body. You want to take a grip on a bar right outside your shoulders. You want to pull your chest up to the bar with good posture. Get your chin above the bar if you can. If you can't, that's okay. Notice Paul taking it through full range of motion too. Probably the most common mistake I see with pull-ups is the swinging of the legs or shortening the reps out, not letting it go through full range of motion. This is excellent the way he goes all the way down and all the way up. Now, we're not 
putting a lot of weight around him for uh, illustrative purposes. But we, the reason why we call these weighted pull-ups is because you're aiming for low repetitions. You're aiming for like two or three reps. That just doesn't look good on video when you're trying to learn how to do it properly. So you do want to add weight to your waist if you can do more than the prescribed reps that we're going to talk about at the end of this video. That's right. If you want to, you can hook a dumbbell around there, use the weight belt, anything to add weight, but you want to fall somewhere between that two to five reps. Now, coming up next are barbell shrugs. All right. We are into the barbell shrugs right here. Now, you want to stand up with a barbell that is outside the shoulders just slightly, and you want to shrug your shoulders up. What you don't want to do is roll your shoulders forward when you're doing this movement. That is a common uh, problem with people's form when they do this exercise. Small, a couple small tips too. Also, I like to activate the glutes, so squeeze the glutes and then abs, abdominals, so you support that low back while you're shrugging up. And then notice Paul's taking this through full range of motion. Another common mistake I see with shrugs are these short little pumping reps with really heavy weight. You're better off taking a lighter weight and taking the movement through its full range of motion. Absolutely. The trapezius, in particular the upper trapezius, really important for supporting the shoulder girdle. So do not skip out on this exercise. Coming up next, barbell curls. All right, here we go. Everybody's favorite exercise to do in the gym. The barbell curls. The now, here's the thing. We make sure you pay attention to the order of operation here. We have done the big compound movements. Now we're moving into some of the isolation exercises. And don't forget that the curls that we're doing right now are definitely one of the most staple movements for the bicep, but there's a lot of carryover and benefit from the movements that you've done previously. Now, it's kind of a basic movement, not too hard. Uh, it's kind of difficult to screw up, but I still people see people messing it up all the time. Don't try and swing crazy with the barbell. You want to have relatively strict form, elbows at your sides, curl the bar up. Now, the elbows can travel up a little bit, um, but you don't want to create this, you don't want to turn this into a Olympic lifting movement. It is a controlled movement. Full extension, that means you go all the way down. Full contraction, that means you go all the way up. Your grip should be right outside your shoulders for most people. Right. And you want to make sure you keep your shoulders out of this movement. So as soon as you start to feel the front of them delt start to rotate forward, you've came up far enough. So try and keep the elbows nice and stationary. Try and keep the shoulders from rotating up as you curl. Absolutely. Coming up next, the barbell skull crusher. All right, Sal, we are now on to the barbell skull crushers right here. You know why they name these skull crushers, Adam? Probably because a few idiots have dropped it on their forehead before. I hope not, but right. I think that's true. So with the skull crusher, you want to start at the very top, arm straight, and you're just bending the elbows. That bottom part of your arm stays stationary as you bend at the elbows and bring the barbell right behind your head, not down to the forehead. It's a safer version, and it engages... Uh, the long head of the tricep a little bit more because your elbows are further back. Probably the most common mistake that I see, Sal, is the moving of the elbow. Notice how Paul's keep his elbows in a very fixed position. He's just breaking at the elbow. A lot of people tend to swing the barbell up and back, and then you're going to get a lot of movement in your shoulder while you do that. Right. Again, good tempo in the video. This is what you want to do in your workout. Coming up next, sit-ups. All right, we are into the weighted decline setup. We have Paul doing this with no weight because this can be very challenging, Sal, just by crossing your arms over that, your chest. That's right. So you want to find yourself a decline bench. Now, notice how at the top, he's in a crunched position. And as he, go back, as he goes back, he unrolls the crunch. He goes all the way down. He comes up and squeezes the abs at the very top. This so, is an ab building exercise. Something I try and coach too is as you're opening up on this sit up, think about laying each vertebrae down individually. So if you think about opening up real slow, laying each vertebrae down on the bench and then rolling it back up. That's right. Good control, good tempo. Do not be surprised if when you do these right, you can only do a few of them. Like I said, these are very difficult. Coming up next, standing calf raise. And your workout wouldn't be complete without training the calves. That's right. Here we are doing a basic standing calf raise. Now, uh, this is a single leg version. You could do this with both legs. You can use a machine. We're demonstrating a very easy, versatile version. You want to balance on one leg. You can use the uh, one of your hands for support, and then the other hand can hold weight to add resistance. I love these, Sal. You know, you said they're easy, but they can actually be really challenging to do this with one leg. A lot of times, a lot of people can't even do this holding on to a dumbbell. So start with just your body weight first, and then if you need to progress, and then also work on that full range of motion. Notice that Paul comes all the way down, stands all the way up on his tippy toes. Yep. Focus on the squeeze and focus on the stretch. All right, guys, so depending where you are on your workout, today's either your first workout of the week or the third foundational workout of the week. You are doing 
MAPS Anabolic Phase 1 workout. Now, there are three phases in MAPS Anabolic. We're showing you Phase 1, literally what's in the program. Now, what you may notice with this program is you're doing full body style workouts and you're working the entire body several times a week. Now, this is different from a lot of the uh, body part split routines that are out there where you hit chest on Monday, back on Tuesday, shoulders on Wednesday, and so on. With MAPS programs, you'll find that you're hitting the body parts more frequently. Now, you may be wondering why. Well, the science shows that hitting the muscles more frequently is more effective than training them less frequently. So let me give you an example. If you had two groups of people, one group trained uh, their chest on Monday for 15 sets and waited till the following Monday to do it again, the other group who did five sets on ch for, of chest on Monday, five sets on Wednesday, and five sets on Friday, the group that did the increased frequency built more muscle. Now we know why this is happening. When you work your muscles, you send a muscle building signal. You do create damage, but you also send a signal to the body that tells it to adapt. Now we can measure this signal roughly by measuring something called muscle protein synthesis. Now this particular signal goes up after your workout and it spikes, it peaks at about 24 to 72 hours, roughly about 48 hours. That's when it's at its highest point. Now at that point, it starts to decline and it declines rapidly. So if you worked out your chest on Monday, Wednesday, the muscle building signal will be at its peak. But if you wait till next Monday, you're missing out on a lot of days of muscle building potential. In fact, it'll start to drop. And many times what it does is it drops below baseline. This is why you can get yourself so sore in a workout, wait a whole week to recover, go back to the gym, and you're not even stronger. It's because your body's just recovering and not building. With MAPS, We've addressed that with increased frequency, full body workouts, but there's more. With this phase one style workout, you may notice a few things. First off, we're gonna get into the exercises here in just a second, but you'll notice that there's not a ton of exercises, but you are doing a lot of sets of particular exercises. For example, barbell squats, we recommend four to six sets of barbell squats. What we're trying to do is we're trying to train your central nervous system. We're trying to get you really strong at this gross motor movement. The other thing you may notice with all these exercises in phase one is the reps. They're really low. A lot of times people will be like, what are you talking about? You know, one to four reps, one to four reps, one to six uh, reps. Why are the reps so low? I thought the muscle building reps were eight to 12. That's partially true. If you were to compare repetition ranges head to head for a short period of time, you would find that eight to 12 repetitions does build more muscle but your body quickly plateaus. And I know a lot of you watching this probably already train in that rep range. And that's too bad because your body's already plateaued and you're missing out on the muscle building effects of those low repetitions. So phase one is low reps. When you're doing your barbell squats, so I'm recommending four to six sets, one to four reps. That means you get into the bar, you do your two, three reps, uh, we don't want you to go to failure, by the way. You want to stop about two reps short, but we do want you to train intensely, rest, and then do another set. And what you're going to find if you do this, by the way, if you repeat these workouts that we're going to give you for phase one for the next two or three weeks, you're going to notice dramatic strength gains every single week. It's, and that's true. I'm being honest with you. You are going to see those kind of strength gains, especially if you don't train in those low rep ranges. So let's get into the exercises. Exercise one, box squats. Now, you're only doing one set of box squats, and you may be wondering, why am I only doing one set? The box squats serve as a primer for the next exercise, which is arguably the most important exercise in the workout, which is the barbell squat. And what the box squats do is they teach you to sit back with your hips. They teach you how to fire your hips properly so that when you move to the barbell squats, now your hips are firing the way they should. You can start to go heavy, and you can start to reap the benefits of the next exercise, which are the barbell squats. This is the king of all exercises for a reason. It puts on muscle like nothing else. The next exercise is the bench press, another foundational movement. Then you're doing pull-ups. Now we do say weighted, but many of you don't need to add any body weight in order to stay within this one to six rep range. But if you're really strong, if you find that you can do 10 reps, get a chain where you can tie a weight uh, between your legs or hold a dumbbell with your legs. The goal is to go low reps. Remember, this is phase one. If you enroll in the MAPS anabolic program, there are more phases where we take your body through different types of adaptation. But this particular phase is heavy. We're looking for central nervous system adaptation. 
We're looking for maximal strength. So try and stay within those particular rep ranges. Then we move on to the barbell shrugs. Again, low repetitions, barbell curls. Now the reps are a little higher here. Same thing with the next exercise, the skull crushers a little higher, six to eight repetitions, and we're not doing quite as many sets. That's because we're not so concerned in phase one with getting really good at barbell curls. We want you to get good at your deadlifts, your barbell squats, all your big gross motor movements. And the reason why we're having you do higher reps here is because barbell curls and skull crushers don't lend themselves well to two repetitions. If you're doing a barbell curl for only two reps, it's pretty easy to cheat and your form goes out the window and it's not very effective. Then you're doing your Sit-up exercises, remember to unwind yourself on that decline and come up real slow. Squeeze the abs. You can actually develop the abdominals if you do these properly to the point where they start to stick out. Even if you're not as lean, you can start to see them more just by building them. So don't believe in that myth about building the waist. Build your midsection. Build those muscles so you can see them and you don't have to get necessarily get leaner to have that six-pack. And finally, of course, calf raises to complete uh, the entire thing. Now, if you follow this program, if you do phase one and it blows your mind, you can actually get the whole program, which includes two more phases, different exercises, lots of things uh, in that program. All you got to do is go to mindpumpmedia.com uh, to sign up for it. Tomorrow, you're going to do trigger sessions. Totally different. Completely different. They're low intensity. They're designed to maintain an anabolic signal. You hear all about, all about them tomorrow when you tune in. Subscribe to this channel, set up your notifications as we post these videos so you can see when they pop up and share this with your friends, get people to follow along with you so you can all do MAPS Anabolic Phase 1 together.